All right, welcome back everybody with Simple Harmonic Motion. Today we are talking about vertical simple harmonic motion. So far we've just had objects on a ho oscillating horizontally back and forth, but this time we're going to have objects oscillating vertically back and forth. What you're going to find is that pretty much the math and everything is kind of the same. There are some differences, but how things work are very similar. Okay. Vertical mass spring system. If the, equilib if the spring is hung vertically, the equilibrium position changes. The equilibrium position is the point at which the spring force equals the gravitational force. The displacement is now measured from the new equilibrium position. Yeah, so for example, we have this spring over here. There's nothing attached to it, and we have this spring. And because nothing is attached to it, we see that this is going to be the equilibrium position right here. However, when we attach a ball to this, like we would imagine, it's going to sag down because the mass of this ball. So what we should know is if it's not going up and down, if it's just stopped here and it's not moving, this is now the equilibrium position. Maybe I'll, I'll put it right here. And it's an equilibrium position because the force of uh, the net force is equal to zero. There is a force of gravity from the ball, force of gravity. And there is a force of tension or force of the spring over here. But they equal each other out. And that's why this has now become the equilibrium position. A lot of times you'll see it like more like in the middle over here. But anyway, just know that. Okay, so again, the equilibrium position is not when there's no forces acting on it. But when the net force is equal to zero. Okay, so moving on, let's try some examples. A spring stretches 4 centimeters when a 0 0.8 kilogram mass is suspended from it. What is the spring constant? Okay, so we find out that when... Let me use a different color for this. Let's do this. Okay. When this goes on it, there it is going to stretch 4 centimeters or 0 0.04 meters until it comes to its new equilibrium. So this is the force of gravity and then the force of the spring. Uh, force of gravity is going to be 0 0.8 times 10, or 8 newtons, and this is also 8 newtons because, again, the equilibrium position is when uh, the net force is equal to 0. So we should also know the force of spring is equal to kx, so if the force of spring is 8, then that means k, because that's what we're looking for, and x being 0 0.04, we can find what k is equal to. 8 divided by 0 0.04 and we get 200 newton per meter. Okay, that makes sense. Moving on. A 2 kilogram block is attached to an unstretched spring of spring constant 200 newton per meter, as shown in the diagram. If it is released from rest, determine the period of the block oscillation. Okay, so, you know, it's high, hanging like this and then you put a block on there and then you let it go, what's going to happen is it's going to start oscillating back and forth like this. So we want to know how long it would take to make a full cycle there and back. Okay, And the formula is the same. Period is equal to 2 pi square root of m over k. So let's just plug things in. 2 pi square root of m is 2 kilograms. k is 200. And let's find out what this all is. 2 divided by 200 square root times 2 pi. We get 0 0.63 seconds. What this is telling us is for it to make a complete cycle, um, if it goes starts from here, goes all the way down, and goes all the way up, that is going to be one full cycle, and that's going to take 0 0.63 seconds. All right, moving on. All right, so conceptual example number three. A mass spring system has a period of three seconds with an amplitude of 0 0.4 meters. What distance does the mass cover in 6 seconds? Interesting question over here. Let's kind of draw this out. So let's say it just really stretch and uh, right here. Let's say it is at its amplitude. And then let's say over here is the equilibrium position. And then over here is the other amplitude. Maybe I'll call it negative. <coughs> so one thing we should know is that when it goes all the way down, and all the way back up, that is the period. And remember, the period is three seconds. 
Next thing that we should know is that if we're looking for what's the distance it covers in six seconds, that means it's going to go all the way down and all the way back up. That's three seconds. And then it's going to go back all the way down and all the way back up. So that's going to be six seconds. Okay. Going, making two full cycles. Next thing we should know is from the amplitude to the equilibrium is 0 0.4 meters. And to the other side of the uh, amplitude is going to be 0 0.4 meters, meaning the total length is going to be 0 0.8 meters. Okay, let's go all the way there. So it's going to go all the way down, that's 0 0.8, and it's going to go all the way back up, that's 1.6, and then it's going to go all the way back down, and that's 2.4, and it's going to go all the way back up, uh, that's going to be 3.2. So now we have 3.2. Hope that made sense. It was probably a little trickier than most people thought. Okay, moving on. A two kilogram block is attached to an unstressed spring of two, a spring constant 200 newton per meter, as shown in the diagram. If it is released from rest, what is the maximum displacement of the block from the equilibrium position while it's undergoing simple harmonic motion? Okay, so this is an interesting question. Uh, okay, so we have, let's just say at the, at the very beginning, let me change this a little bit how it looks. At the very beginning, we have an unstretched spring with no block on it, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to put this block on it. And what's going to happen is originally, let me erase this. Originally, before the block is on it, this is the equilibrium position. However, once we put this block on it, now the equilibrium position is going to change. It's going to go down a little bit further, and this is going to be the equilibrium position. So what does that mean? That means this over here was the original equilibrium position, but now this has become the equilibrium position. That now what this means is this is going to be the amplitude, meaning it's going to be um, oscillating from here to here. Okay, And we can find out what this amplitude is or what this maximum displacement is of the block from the equilibrium position. Okay. And how do we do that? Well, we could just know that this is going to be equal. If we go over here, the force of gravity is going to be equal to the force of the spring. Force of gravity is equal to 20 newtons, and the force of the spring is going to be equal to 20 newtons. So I know force of spring is equal to 20 newtons, which is also equal to kx. So k being 200 and x, we do not know, but that x is going to give us the amplitude. So 20 divided by 200, and we get x is equal to 0 0.1 meters. That is the amplitude. That might have been a little confusing, so watch it again if it didn't make too much sense to you. But we'll be doing probably a few more, something like this. All right, let's look at this example. An object of mass 8 kilograms is attached to an ideal mass spring and allowed to hang. The spring stretches 3.6 centimeters before it reaches its equilibrium position. If the system is allowed to oscillate, what will be its frequency? Okay, great. I'm going to just change this to be 0 0.036 meter. Oops. Okay, and now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the formula here. Force of gravity, or I should say Hooke's law, force of spring, to figure out what the k constant is or the spring constant. So force of gravity is 80 newtons, and that means the force of spring is 80 newtons because it's in equilibrium, they cancel each other out. So let's see, force of spring is equal to 80 newtons, which is equal to kx. k is what we're looking for, and x is 0 0.036. Okay, that's how much it stretched from its original equilibrium position. So this gives us now a new k value. 80 divided by 0 0.036, and we get, ooh, it's big, 2,222.22 newton per meter. Now, what we can do is we can find the frequency, but I'm going to find the period first because that's the formula we use more often. Period is equal to 2 pi square root of m over k. So let's do this 2 pi square root of m, which is 8. K, which is 2,222.22. And let's see what we get. 2 pi times the root of 8 divided by 2. 
uh, 0 0.38 seconds. So that's how long it takes to make a full cycle, but we want to find the frequency, which is the inverse. So 1, we get around 2.65. 2.65 hertz. Okay. Part B, how many times will the, ma will the mass make a full cycle in one second? So, okay. How many times will the mass make a full cycle in one second? So remember, frequency is the amount of cycles it makes in one second. So they're saying in one second, this thing will make 2.65 cycles. So how many full cycles? It will only make two full cycles. Okay. All right, moving on. At which location is the magnitude of the force on the block in a uh, block system uh, at a maximum? Okay. So remember... When it's all the way at the amplitude, that's when the spring pushes on it the most, force of the spring, force of the spring, either pulling it or pushing it out. So that's when the force is the most and the acceleration is going to be the most. So it's going to be D when it is at the amplitude or the negative amplitude. All right, moving on. At which location is the magnitude of the force on the block in a spring uh, block system a minimum? So that's when the, the spring is not pushing nor pulling and that's going to be at the equilibrium position this is also where it's going the fastest um, but it's not being pushed or pulled and uh, so it's in the equilibrium position so that's when the force is a minimum and the acceleration is also zero force is zero acceleration i should say net force and net acceleration is zero. okay moving on a mass M is attached to an ideal mass of spring when this system is set in motion with amplitude a it has a period T. What is the period if the amplitude of the motion is increased to A? Okay, so let's look at the period formula. It's equal to 2 pi square root of M over K. Something, and we're wondering if this is stretched more, if this is stretched more, how does this affect the period? Okay, and I think a lot of people want to use their intuition with these kind of problems. And if you've seen my videos, I talk about this a lot. Where they're like, okay, if it's stretched more, that means it has to go a longer distance. And if it has to go a longer distance, it's probably going to take more time. So they'll probably say, oh, it has to take more time. But again, I don't want you to use your intuition when it comes to physics, but I want you to think about the formulas and analyze. So this is the formula for period. And what you'll notice is it's dependent on two things, the mass of the object and the stiffness of the spring. It has nothing to do with the amplitude or how much is stretched or not stretched. So what does that mean? That means it has no effect. Okay, not very intuitive, but that's what the answer is going to be. Even though it travels a, a, a longer distance, it moves more quickly, so it compensates. Okay, moving on. If we double only the amplitude of a vibrating ideal mass and spring system, the mechanical energy of the system blank. So, okay. We could either look at it horizontally or vertically. It doesn't really matter. But let's say we're looking at this uh, vertically. So now instead of it oscillating like this, it's now going to be oscillating like, let's see, this over here. And it's going to be oscillating double to a... Okay, so remember the total energy, uh, total energy is going to be equal to the elastic potential energy at the amplitude, so one half Ka squared. Okay, so what happens is if this A doubles, what does that mean? That means since there's it doubles, there's two and there's a square here, that means that this total energy is going to increase by a factor of 4. Okay? And if you want to plug in numbers, you can. You'll get the same answer, but the answer is D. Moving on. A mass M is attached to an ideal massless spring. When this system is set in motion, it has a period of T. What is the period if the mass is doubled to 2M? Okay, so same thing if we kind of did a, if you looked at the problem before this. We know that the period formula is equal to 2 pi square root of m over k. Like I said, don't use your intuition. Look, analyze the formula. 
So now we notice that this m is going to be doubled. Okay, this m is going to be doubled. That means that if this side is doubled, that means this has to change. And since it's in the numerator, that means it's also going to increase. However, this is a square root, so we're going to do square root over 2 times t. So it's going to be c. Does that make sense? Again, you could use real numbers if you just make up the numbers as well and see what you get. All right, so that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. And I'll see you with the next chap uh, with the next subtopic, which is a bit harder, kind of talking about graphs. Oh, no, pendulums. Oh, that's not too bad. All right, see you with that one. Bye.